Well, good morning, everybody. I'm going to start recording. So I think we can start off by introducing our panelists. Um, I'm Tricia Clay, and I'm the Chief Information Officer here in ITS at Hudson County Community College. Next, we have Ken. Can you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Ken Maluski. I am the Help Desk Manager. I'm Omar Williams, Manager of Web and Portal Services. Hi, I'm Fiona Prue Johnson from the Lucy Enterprise System ITS office. Sandra, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm um, good morning. I'm Sandra Aviles, ITS Administrative Assistant. And Anna's here with us. I think you all know Anna. Hi, everyone. I'm not presenting. Though. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm one of the participants. Um, uh, but I do want to um, thank Trisha for reaching out and her team for putting this together. Um, we've actually kind of informally were thinking that we should have a WebEx on how to do a WebEx. And so this was good timing, especially now that we are continuing to do um, uh, to host uh, more kind of workshops and programs um, that employees are um, really volunteering to do. So I really appreciate it. And um, I also have some questions of my own, but I'm sure we'll come to that part um, uh, when we get to it. So thank you again, and um, I look forward to participating. Great, thanks everybody. So um, since we're doing this as a WebEx event, just a few little housekeeping items. Um, you have access to the to chat and also a Q&A. So if you have questions, you can go ahead and put them in the Q&A and we'll do our best to monitor those and answer your questions either as we, as we progress or at our Q&A time. So we're gonna talk about tips and tricks for remote work and some of us have done remote work either never <laughs> before, some have done remote work sporadically, I'm one of the sporadic types, and some have done a lot of remote work. And I think now that we've been thrust into it, we've learned something. So the things we're gonna cover today Are we going to talk about tips and tricks for WebEx, which most of those also apply to any other tool you use for video conferencing, how you can get help from us if you need it, um, accessing software that you need, ways to get to your data, um, blocking your schedule, um, because we don't just have a door that we can close, right? And then how do we know when, uh, you know, I know these things, memes go across the internet. Uh, now we know how many meetings should have been an email, but, um, you know, also when should an email be a meeting? And then tips for the virtual uh, water cooler. So first up on WebEx. Um, so, we, we were talking about this yesterday, we were doing a little bit of a walkthrough, and um, there's kind of only one thing that you should not use um, is a remote desktop or a, a computer that doesn't have a, a uh, camera and microphone that's locally attached to it that you can physically touch with your hands. I'm gonna do a bad thing now, but this thing right here, you yeah. um, know? So if you're in a remote desktop and your camera is playing at your chair in uh, Journal Square in North Hudson, that's not going to work. Um, we recommend you use a local laptop if you have a webcam and, and good Wi-Fi or you're connected to um, an ethernet cable. And if you don't even know what an ethernet cable is, don't worry about it. <laughs> and it, 
use your phone or your tablet that has a camera if you have issues with Wi-Fi. I use a can I use my phone for WebEx uh, regularly when I don't have to share any content. Like I don't have a presentation like we do um, right here. Next thing, so WebEx audio. Right now, I am called in on my phone for audio because I've been having some issues with my internet here at the house and I don't want to get choppy or suddenly disappear <laughs> from, from audio with you guys. Um, if, your if your wi Wi-Fi or your internet is slow, you can turn off video. So here in, a, in an event, we have our little, all our little heads, right? And some people have their video turned off. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that as long as we can hear each other. Um, if you have any questions about your webcam or you can't get your face to show up when you're testing, that's fine. You can use your phone. Um, Omar had a good tip on this one. Omar, you want to cover this tip about testing? Yes, yeah, so <clears throat> sometimes if you're not getting any audio, it depends on your the, the actual physical device. Uh, for example, my desktop doesn't have um, speakers, so I'm using a Bluetooth speaker. So sometimes when you put the put your computer in sleep mode or restart it, sometimes it breaks the connection. It's like a 50-50. So sometimes if you're not having audio, there's been times where we have our meetings in the morning and my audio is not working, it's because my Bluetooth would have been disconnected. So sometimes it just helps to just kind of recheck those things that you, you normally wouldn't have to, but it's just those little, you know, 10% like, oh, it disconnected. I just have to reconnect and then everything should be working fine. Right. And the don'ts are pretty simple. Uh, don't join audio on your phone and your laptop at the same time. That if you, if this hasn't happened to you, good for you. <laughs> Because you get a horrible video uh, audio loop that just is no good for anyone. Um, so don't join audio in two, two different devices in the same physical place. That's bad for everyone. And do not give up. Um, if you have a problem, you can always call us and we will help you. All right. So. How do you get ITS help? Um, I'll let Ken speak to this since that's his job, but I think most of the most of the pertinent items are highlighted here. So um, if you call us, you can call us at our regular number, 201-360-4310. We currently have uh, Aleutian triaging the calls for us. So when you do call them, please provide them your, your name, a telephone number where you can be reached at, and your email address along with, along with the problem that you're having. And we will try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Now, what we've been seeing is that um, when my technicians are calling people back, we don't have caller ID on our number. So it might, you, might get a, you might get a number saying it's unknown number or spam number. Um, so it's also important that you provide an email address where we can reach you. And of course, uh, if you send an email to ITS help, uh, it'll automatically generate a tracker ticket. So again, if you provide us with a contact number or a way to reach you, we can get back to you as quickly as possible. And we've also been utilizing WebEx especially so we can actually remote into your computer to find out what's going on and help you. Thanks, Ken. So um, the other thing we'd like to kind of help you with today is how do you share your screen on WebEx? So you're having a problem, you're stuck, and now you're really stuck because somebody wants to help you and you don't know how to show them what's going on. So it, on the very bottom here where it says share your screen on WebEx, what we've done is we've highlighted the share button. This little panel here is something that shows up in WebEx. Anytime you're in a WebEx, you should see all these little buttons. 
And basically it's audio, video. And the third one is the important one here, which is share your screen. Right, and if you don't see those buttons, uh, if you just place your mouse towards the bottom of the screen, they'll, they'll pop up. Right, they hide themselves helpfully. So, so hover your mouse over your screen and you should see those. Now, sometimes you might not have the ability to do those depending on how the, the meeting is set up. But when, you're, when you are requesting help from us, you will see that. So this is, what you're, this is the kind of thing you're going to get when you click that share button. And what, I've, what we've given you here is this giant <laughs> arrow. And all the arrows pointing to is, if the problem is Outlook, that's the little uh, thumbnail that you want to click. So that's the little indicator you want to click. There's more things down at the bottom of here where you can also um, share a file, which is what we're doing here with this PowerPoint. You can share other applications, or you can actually make a whiteboard. Um, if we have time at the end, maybe we can play with a whiteboard because that's kind of fun. But um, anyway, if you need help with a certain thing, like if you're having, you're needing help with Outlook, you want to click that one. Then, once you're sharing your screen, this is what's going to pop up, and this is another one of those helpful hoverers, like Ken was talking about. Um, so it can disappear on you. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little slippery, but it'll be at the top of your screen. Um, and so you can, you can stop sharing, you can pause sharing, you can change the sharing, um, and you can annotate, so you can do things like, and I think I can do it here, so you can do things like uh, circle, Maybe I can do it, maybe I can't. Here it is. So you can do this, like circle something. Circle annotation, right? You can do that. So to give someone control, so if you have a, and I wouldn't recommend that you give control of your screen to anybody in the world, but if you're on with a technician, they might be asking you, uh, requesting control, you would select approve, and you can also give control kind of proactively, and that's with this assign, pass keyboard and mouse control, and then the, the technician's name would show up there. So um, that's those. Anything else you want to say about that, Ken? Uh, you you all you ultimately have control whether you grant the technician permission to access your system or, or not. The the technician always has to request control and you always have to grant it. Uh, he simply will not take control from you. He will always ask permission. And you can always stop stop granting. You can always stop sharing by again just simply choosing shop uh, stop sharing from the from the top of the screen. Again, that's this this button here. Sure. Can you go back a couple of slides, please? Sure. That button is right there. So that no, here. go forward one more. Sorry. Okay. So so I want to I want to talk about this screen. Um, what what distinguishes these? Um, you see uh, on the slide there it says screen one. Screen one is going to share your entire desktop. Whereas the ones below it are just share specific applications. So if you want the technician to see just, you just want to see your Outlook, and you don't want the technician to see anything else, simply choose Outlook. If you're not particular what the technician is going to see, then you can simply choose screen one and that will share your entire desktop. That would be this thing. So if you want to show an interaction maybe between Outlook and Teams or between Outlook and Microsoft Word, that's how you would do that. You would share screen one. Okay, so onward. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways that you can access software that you need that you may not have on your 
local computer. And by local computer, I mean that physical thing that you can put your hands on, my laptop right here that I can touch with my hand. So there's two different ways you can get to that. You can use a virtual desktop, or you may have heard the project called VDI. And you just go to a browser and you go to remote.accc.edu. You'll probably be seeing there STEM desktop and then Windows 10 general, which is this guy over here. Both will have um, applications that you would normally find only installed at, our, at the physical campus. Now, you might be saying, well, wait, I have this special piece of software that ITS installed for me on my computer and I, don't, I can't get access to it. Well, in that case, you, you can use remote desktop where you can go to your office computer. Now you do need VP, a VPN connection or you can remote desktop through a VDI session, um, but you can, still, you can get to that computer if you need to. Omar, did you wanna talk about how you, how you use remote desktop to get to software that, you, that is only available to you on campus? Yeah, so um, I use a, was it a remote desktop through Cisco AnyConnect? So that allows me to, what I would, I guess, best describe as connecting to the network at the college. And the, the, I don't know if this is unique to me or anybody else who might be doing it this way, that it kind of disrupts the connection that I have at my home system. So for example, if I'm connecting through remote access, I can I can interface with my work uh, system from home. But then if I wanted to click out and connect through like a Google, I mean Chrome on my like my own desktop, it wouldn't allow me to do so. So I would actually have to disconnect to do that. For example, like right now I'm disconnected from VPN to do this call. But if I was to try to do a WebEx call still connected to, to remote access, I'd be accessing my camera at the job. So I would be looking at uh, my, my, the back of my desk or something like that, whatever the camera's looking at at the moment. So um, I guess depending on how you choose to interact with it, you might have these kind of these little hurdles. Oh, they're not challenges or anything. It's just a matter of knowing what to do depending on the, the way you're choosing to access your system. Right, that's a good point, actually. I, I want to go back a second to, oops, went too far. So on the audio thing, you also don't want to be connected. Let me see if this text thing works. You don't really want to be connected to a VPN while you're doing a WebEx or a Zoom. There's sometimes you might need to, Fiona might be asking you to do, do that for certain things with colleague, right? But yeah. it, it's not good for video. If you're trying to actually show video, because what's happening is you're, you're all this information is kind of going out to the office and coming all the way back to you. And that just adds a whole slow down to the process. So that might be a good, good chance to, uh, to go ahead and call in with your phone while you're doing that one. All right, so back to where we were. Okay. okay. Um, if I may say, my, I may chime in, uh, Trish. Sure. If you're going to connect to remote desktop via VPN or VDI, uh, there's two things. One, your computer in the office has to be turned on and connected to the network. So if you if you try to connect to your computer in the office and it says that it, it, there's no network connection or it can't find that computer, call the help desk right away. That computer may be turned off or hung and we can go into the office and actually check it out. And two, uh, you need to know the actual name of your computer if you want to connect to it. And the naming standard that we use at Hudson is your is the name of your computer is going to be your username. In my case, it's Kay, uh, Kay Maluski. 
www.hcc.edu. So two things, you need to know the name of your remote desktop computer and that, that computer needs to be turned on. Great, Ken, thanks a lot. Yeah, that's a, if you need to do that, I would recommend that you reach out to the help desk first before you try to do it. Uh, the v VDI situation, you can connect to that at any time. But again, if you run into trouble, reach out to us. Okay, so there's a few other ways to get to uh, data you need. One, I recommend, if you have not set up OneDrive yet, do it now. Like when we get off of here, go do it. Because that, and, and we'll, expl uh, we'll kind of show how, how that's helpful to you later. But OneDrive is accessible anywhere. Um, you can store anything but sensitive data there. Now, what do I mean by sensitive data? I mean social security numbers, I mean birth dates, I mean bank account numbers, I mean, am I missing anything, Fiona? Um, address, you have address, date of birth, social security numbers, um, anything that can link a person and, and basically compromise the identity. So I often say, you know, think about yourself. If, if that's you, what would you want out in a space that's not secure? So date of birth, address can always be linked, um, social security numbers and things like that. So I would say put yourself in that situation. And if you even have a question and, you know, you can always reach out to us and, and we'll be more than happy to say to you, okay, you know what, tell us what's in the data and we can certainly tell you whether it's PII or not. Right, and then for that sensitive data that you, that needs to be specially secured, that's fine. We have a solution for that one too. Um, that gets shared on a shared drive. But again, we need, you need, um, you need a VPN connection for that, which is fine. Um, we will be happy to help you with that. I lost my pen. <laughs> right there, VPN connection, all right. The other thing you can do is you can share um, files that you're working on with your coworkers or some in a team with working on a certain project. Um, you can use Microsoft Teams or you can use WebEx Teams. Now, what I would say there is whatever you're most familiar with, go ahead and keep using it. So if you've been using Microsoft Teams, keep using Microsoft Teams. If you don't have a Microsoft Teams set up and you'd like to talk to us about WebEx Teams, we'd be happy to help you with that one. So OneDrive, what I've given you here is um, you you're, you can log in on your computer and you can use it like any other folder. That's this guy right here. That's just a screenshot from my computer. Um, you can access your files from the phone. So that one, that screenshot is from my phone right here. And you can also log in from any browser. You just go to portal.office.com and log in with your HCCC credentials and click OneDrive and here you go. So as you can see, it's all the same folders. I didn't drill into any files, but you get the point. <laughs> They're all there. So when I'm in a meeting, you know, not, not in a total remote world, but in the old days when I was in a meeting and somewhere away from my office and I, somebody said, oh, you sent me that file, I could actually look at it on my phone. And it's still good here, right? I can still do it from my from the couch instead of here in my in my office. So blocking your schedule. Um, let's, we can do a test here. Who can if you can can if you've ever heard of blocking your schedule, raise your hand. You should have a little hand raiser thing in your panel.
I don't know if that is it or not. Or you can type in the chat too, if you've ever heard of it before. Uh, Catherine raised her hand, Catherine Marisol. Okay, Catherine, yay, we have another, uh, another uh, block scheduler. Also, oh, um, VPN, yes, VPN is provided by the college. That's to access the college itself. We don't, it's not necessarily VPN for, you know, like people use it on their phone to be more uh, private. If that's not the purpose of it. The purpose is more about um, accessing the college's information securely. So, blocking your schedule. So, what 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 that is, and thanks, Catherine, for noting that you've heard of this before. And I I see some people saying no, they've never heard of it. Uh, what blocking your schedule is about is doing things like making an appointment for yourself to work on a project. So I tried to make an appointment for myself to work for us to work on this presentation. That was one thing. Another thing is make sure you schedule uh, team meetings and one-on-one -on -one meetings to recur regularly. So I don't forget that I need to talk to Ken once a month about what's going on. And I don't forget to talk to Omar and I don't forget to have uh, team meetings with Fiona and the rest of the team. We, we try to block those out. Also, mark your, block out an appointment. Now, we're not probably going to the doctor or what have you, hopefully, now, but maybe, you know, my daughter needs time for me to help her with her schoolwork, which, by the way, that's fictitious. She's 17 and doesn't need any help with her homework, hardly at all. <laughs> And when she does, I'm always like, I don't remember this, so I can't help you. But um, block that out. You know, mark yourself as as uh, not available. And you can also use categories to visually sort time. So let's see. I have a screenshot first. Now this is my crazy schedule. <laughs> okay. And the colors are not really important. It's more about what makes sense to you. So you could have uh, different colors for different things, different colors for different people. Um, but that's how in very quickly you can kind of get an idea of how you're spending all of your time. Um, anybody, anybody on the panel have any other tips for keeping your, managing your time while you're busy at home? Uh, I, I think it's important, uh, we spoke about this briefly uh, yesterday, that, that you allow yourself a cutoff point because when you're working from home, the days can kind of blend into each other. Mm -hmm. um, and then for those of us who kind of deal with things after hours, um, it could become very easy to just kind of feel like you're at your computer at all times. So it's important to be able to have that separation to allow yourself to step away for, for lunch, you know, and when you do that, physically step away from your computer. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's not just, uh, well, good, one, it's good for circulation. It's not good to sit down all day, um, but also it's good for peace of mind. Um, because you, it, it allows a level of normalcy, like where you get up to get yourself a, a tea or a coffee, you kind of walk around the house. So if, you know, if you have property, you walk around your property or you, or you just kind of go outside and get some fresh air. Um, again, if you're going to grab lunch, step physically step away from whatever your workspace is, whether you have an office at home, whether you have a, a, a corner that has a picnic table and a laptop, whatever that workspace is, physically remove yourself from it so that you don't feel like you're kind of just dealing with projects like at a machine gun rate. Yeah, one of the things I, um, to go along with what Omar said that I found that works for me is um, I, set, I set my routine almost like if I'm at work. So I know, and everybody that knows me, that when I get into work, the first thing I tend to do is either have tea or coffee. So no matter what I'm doing in the morning, the first thing I make sure I do is 
when I sit down to work, I try to mimic that same routine at work because it kind of conditions my mind to be at work. And when I started conditioning that, I know that maybe I'll take like five minutes around, what is it, 10 or 11, and I'll talk to Sandra. And so I do those breaks and I step out on the balcony for five minutes or something like that. But I think breaking it up helps you to, number one, decompress, and it helps you to come back to something with like a fresh mind and things aren't just rotating in your mind constantly going, I'm running from this to this to this to this. But by breaking up the monotony, it just gives you clarity. And I find that works for me. Uh, another thing is um, for those who have young ones, uh, that helps with the multitasking. Um, I'm fortunate where, for the most part, my son can stay with his uh, grandparents, but that's not always the case. So there are those occasions where I'll be working and I literally have him right beside me. Um, that helps break up the monotony. <laughs> so um it's just a matter of just making sure that he's occupied with his shows or anything like that and um surprisingly enough he'll even be relaxed watching me work i'll have him baby in one hand and i'm typing code in the other um so these you know it's kind of those adjustments that you have to kind of make while being at home in addition to trying to find a level of normalcy um because again, if you're not doing these things, the, as simple as they sound, these do, as, as Fiona said, help you to decompress. It helps you to kind of um, air your mind out, so to speak. Um, because sometimes for those of us who log off, we're still thinking about the stuff that we have to do tomorrow because a lot of stuff we're working on is time sensitive or there's a lot of moving parts. So you're trying to be proactive and think about how to deal with those moving parts ahead of time. So you're not really allowing yourself to, to, to let go of the day, even though the day is already done. And right. It's important, I and think I that, said, yeah, go ahead, Ken. I'm sorry. Uh, it's important that you also reach out to your family and friends just to make sure how to make sure that they're doing okay. And just to have some human contact outside of the people in your own home. And that, I think that's very important to, to, to remember that you're part of a part of a family in a larger community. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And I've I've said for years, um, you know, working with other technical folks, sometimes just is when you're kind of not sure what the next step is, even in your work. Great thing to do is just get up and go for a walk. Um, you know, even if it's like up and down the stairs or you know, go get a cup of water or something. Because sometimes we get kind of, we're just stuck in a thought loop. And uh, my my dad used to say he, he works, he, well, he's a man of many talents, but anyway, he work on mechanical stuff. And he'd say, you know, sometimes I go to sleep at night when I wake up in the morning, I know exactly what I need to do to fix something. And I worked on it for 12 solid hours the day before, you know. So, I mean, we can't go to sleep and, 11 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> probably that's not a good idea, but we can take a little bit of a walk. So yeah, so the virtual water cooler, and this is one, I don't know, some as a technical person, so I'm not good at this, but anyway, uh, you know, share those memes. I, I have not necessarily been a meme sharer, but since we've been virtual, I've, I've started going looking for memes. So share the memes. You saw a funny video. Well, share it. You know, share it out to your to your friends or your coworkers. I think did I miss something? I feel like I missed something. There. No, I guess not. Anyway, um, the you know virtual happy hour with drinks. It doesn't matter if you have a nice tea or you have a coffee. It doesn't have to be alcohol, right? But you know, just that time to kind of talk about something else. Um, who's binge watching what? I have some colleagues that we share back and forth, like, oh, you have to check out this thing, this movie, right? Um, and you can share your favorite book. So even if we can't get a book from the library physically, you know, we can go download them from the library on our Kindle, iPad, computer, phone even. I don't know that I recommend reading a book on your phone, but you can do it. I've done it before on a on an airplane. 
when it's absolutely necessary. So any other things that you guys, panelists can think of on the virtual water cooler or staying humanly connected side of the fence? Uh, I think the most important thing is balance. And uh, for those of us who have had to like stay, like, like not leave the house at all, um, but you know, you can kind of be where you live. You have to have the balance because right now we're in a space where everything we do is at home. Our home stuff is at home. Our work stuff is at home. Our school stuff is at home. Um, so the fact that you're still looking at the same walls, no matter what <laughs> different function you're doing, it's important to to kind of live your life the best way you can as far as outside of work, but also not to become complacent because you're home. Um, sometimes when, you know, people are in the house all the time, sometimes it doesn't matter what they're doing, it kind of becomes uh, slightly complacent, but it's like you have to kind of stay vigilant in in what you're doing. So you're you're working from home, you're working, you know, don't, oh, I was, I was taking a break, and then three hours later, you know, I was binge watching, whatever. Like, you know, you're at work, so you just have to kind of buckle down for that function. Um, and it's just, a, it's just about adjustment. You know, just kind of time management is key. You know, during between this time and this time, this is what you're doing. And then when the workday is done, then you have your home life and you kind of make the time. I think this kind of time allows us opportunity to kind of do the things or be the way that we want to be that we didn't allow ourselves to do before um, because we were too busy dealing and doing other things. But now that we're home, you have the time to reconnect with your family the family not even just outside the house but reconnect with those under the same roof as you because sometimes these devices kind of take us away from that um and it's just it allows you to now learn the thing that you'd never gave yourself time to learn if you wanted to pick up an art or take pick up technology video editing anything you, you now have the opportunity to do those things and share those things and I think this is a, a really good opportunity to connect as as a human being, you know, and not device, like real socializing, you know, real socializing, you know, not just texting because texting could be misinterpreted and, and this, that, and the third, but just even like the one thing I like from this list right here, it, it's going to sound funny, the virtual happy hour. And that's because that's interaction. Like right now, if this was a, a, a non-work setting, this would be a good opportunity for all of us to get to know each other on a personal level. Um, I personally, I, every, I have a standing meeting with my brother and five of my childhood friends every Tuesday at 8.30. And we're usually just talking and just reconnecting until like almost midnight. And that, that helps us to have a level of normalcy because we grew up together. And for those of us who can do that, should do that, for family, friends, uh, coworkers that you are friends with, because we spend a lot of time with each other. So one would assume that we would become friends. <laughs> so um, I think that's important personally. And I think one of the things that we do on our team is we have a, a group chat in teams and you can do that with your coworkers. And, you know, we say good morning, we mimic the same things that we would at work. We say good morning and when we're leaving, we say good night. And, um, when you say good morning, you put like a funny meme up there that's either, you know, humorous or something cutesy, whatever works for you. Because the whole point is that I think is trying to not just look at it as work and then you're jumping from work to home. But I think that social interaction with your teammates is so important. And, um, you know, we may laugh and like Trisha said, we may talk about a show or maybe once a week for your meetings, it's more of a social thing and you just share some of the some of the same things you would in the office, like if you just went to somebody's desk and, and talked about it. And then um, one of the things I wanted to mention that I do, that I started doing at home is when I started work, my husband works at home. That's just the nature of his job. And what I've learned how to do is now I'm coming into his workspace. So what I did is I created myself a workspace. So he knew that if I'm in this space, that means I'm working. So he won't probably run on the stairs and go, hey, what are we having for lunch? Or, hey, you thought about dinner, but he'll go, okay, she's in the workspace and she didn't deviate from it. So I'm just going to wave and back away. And, and, you know, I'm just creating that environment so that family members can assume, well, they can make the assumption, okay, she's work, maybe she's video conferencing with somebody 
or she's working on a project or something, but it kind of gives them a little barrier, almost like you would at work, because at work you don't have them running up, hey, going, hey, what's for lunch? And, you know, if you're in a video call, you don't have some, you know, they don't, somebody else doesn't hear, hey, what are we having for lunch today? And if they think it's just important to create those different things at home, almost to mimic what you do at work. Yeah, I think those are those are great points. Um, it, it's funny. So I have four people here at my house that are all basically working from home. Uh, a high school student who's doing all remote learning, a college student who's suddenly doing remote learning, my husband and myself, plus a whole bunch of animals. I'm not even going to get into that one. <laughs> And, you know, sometimes, like right now, I close my door so, so that we wouldn't have dogs, cats, whatever, showing up. And, and while we're sitting here, my daughter's texting me, like, can you help me later? I want to do this thing, you know. But, and I've seen a lot of great things where uh, people put little signs on their office door. And I know not not all of us have offices, sadly, you know. It might be, and I've done this before, my, my old office was in my bedroom on my bed because I didn't even have enough room in there for a, for a desk. And so, so sometimes then you have to have like a visual reminder. I'm more like Fiona's talking about, you know, I'm working. Um, I, I put on work clothes for my own sanity pretty much. <laughs> So that I remember, okay, you're working now, and later you won't be working, you know, or at least hopefully. Uh, like Omar said, we have to give ourselves time off. All right, let's see here. Okay, so this is one of my favorite topics, email hell. Um, <laughs> so, uh Emails, right? We we love emails in higher ed. I, I I don't know if it's the same in all all industries, but it definitely is a big thing in higher education. Um, my recommendation is if you have more than five replies to an email that's in a really short time frame, go ahead and schedule a call. Um, you know, I think Omar was talking about things like and Ken too, and Fiona about, you know, personal connection, but sometimes we just need to talk to each other. You know, there's something lost, no more we're talking about in texting. Um, you know, something is getting lost in the translation of text and we just need to take five minutes and have a phone call. Um, when we have to review content, so we're working on this presentation, that's when it's good to have a WebEx. You know, put that pre put that presentation or that screen in front of us, um, and when you just need to set, send a quick quick message, and and uh, Fiona talked about this, or just chat with somebody. That's a great time to use Microsoft or WebEx Teams to send a chat. Um, collaborating on a document, you can do that with OneDrive or Face. I thought I updated this. Or WebEx Teams. Here, let me put up. I thought I fixed this one. In Microsoft Teams as well. I don't know what I was thinking about there. Uh, <laughs> I guess I had Facebook on the brain when I was saving. <laughs> But yeah, both of those, uh, OneDrive and WebEx or Microsoft Teams is really great for collaborating on documents. Um, so, um, yeah, the thing that I find that I do, um, if you have to, if you if you're going back and forth with an email, sometimes you you can just set up a web meeting on WebEx and. In just in projects that I'm working on right now, I find that I get more collaboration when I can get people on a WebEx and get them face to face. It to, I've gotten more participation, more collaboration, more stuff done. There's just something to be said from you know the whole face to face, and we can see each other. We can you know it's more than just my picture on the screen. There's times when I'll have my picture up there if I'm sharing, 
but um, you can have more of a collaboration because you see expression, you see you, you get to see people's faces, and it just changes the dynamics of how you work and participation and getting something done a lot faster. I find that that works a lot for me in the projects that I have. So I am I'm always really quick to set up a Zoom or a WebEx or whatever it is just to get something done because chances are I can start, we can get it working in five minutes versus the email going back and forth. Right. So, um, Alexa has a question. What's the main difference between WebEx and Zoom? Oh, that's a great question. I, I'm getting this question a lot from people privately. Like, what what video conferencing tool should I use? Um, and generally speaking, I would say that uh, Zoom is very user friendly. Um, it's very easy to set up. They're adding a lot of features, which is good. Um, I think WebEx is better with security, has more security built into it. Now they're adding a lot of security features with Zoom, with all that Zoom bombing um, attention. Um, and I think that there's collaboration features within WebEx that are better. Uh, the college selected WebEx because because of the uh, physical hardware that we were buying to go in classrooms for immersive video, which we're not using that right now, right? We're all just using a webcam. So in general, I would say most, if, if all you want to do is have a video call, Zoom, WebEx, uh, Google Meet, um, what else, FaceTime, they're all similar if all you want to, or, or even Facebook has in Messenger you can do video calls. They're all, if that's all you want to do, use whatever is easier for you to do. Um, now with WebEx for the college, everyone who works for the college has a WebEx license. So you don't have issues where you're using Zoom and it's going to cut you off after 40 minutes. I've had some fun with that during this mm -hmm. pandemic time where we're I'm working on a meeting privately and all of a sudden 40 minutes comes and poof, we're just kicked off. Did you have something you wanted to say about that, Ken? I'm sorry, I missed that. Is there any other, are there any other differences between WebEx and Zoom that you would want to highlight? Well, again, as, as, as Trisha said, if you're doing video calls, there's, there's really no functional difference between them. However, WebEx has much more robust collaboration tools. That is, if you want to share uh, files, if you want to do uh, whiteboarding, uh, chat, uh, WebEx is, it's much more robust in that respect. Do you have a comment Fiona you use both <laughs> yeah <laughs> I use both and and like I said most people that use zoom they're gonna have that 40 minute window so you know you're gonna it's gonna kick you off in 40 minutes and it, it will count you down so if you're in the middle of a really you know a, a important meeting you're gonna get cut off with WebEx you all have unlimited access to it so if you can utilize the WebEx, I would say that's the way to go. Um, Zoom and WebEx have the same functionality. I use Zoom most of the time for my meetings. Um, it's, and I, I attribute it to creature of habit. I don't attribute it to any difference in the two, just being a creature of habit. Um, and that's, that's the difference that I know in the two. So if you're gonna have a lengthy meeting past 40 minutes, use WebEx, it's going to probably be your best bet without your meeting just abruptly ending and everybody going, what happened? Is it something I said? Right. They're both, That's they're both very easy, they're both very easy to use. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they both do the job very well. Yeah. Right. Um, I think what, what we all noticed um, in the beginning of this, everyone in the world went remote. So every one of these services had some issue at some time where you couldn't get on, you couldn't be heard, the quality was not good. I, I noticed it getting a little bit better. 
um, but still like the middle part of the day seems to be spottier than early in the morning or later in the evening. So, but that's a, a lot of that could be just internet connect congestion. Okay. Okay. So, so we have another question, Trish. Uh, does Microsoft sure. Teams have a similar method where you can share, where you can share at like Google Docs, where you, everyone can edit? It does, um, and you can also do it with uh, OneDrive online too. If you go to that portal.office.com, you can actually you'll actually see everyone editing, which is very similar to Google Docs. Um, I mean, Google Docs is brilliant for what it's brilliant at. Um, I was having a conversation with my daughter again yesterday that the high school has made Office 365 available to her. So she wanted to know, like, she's been on Google for forever. And she's like, I don't think it can do what Google Docs can do. And I'm like, well, actually it can, it just looks a little different. So, yeah. What do you think, Fiona, about um, collaborating on documents? You have a preferred method? I actually like, cause, you know, we have a couple of projects, like I mentioned, I'm, that I'm working on. And what I found with Microsoft Teams is that you can have a team site. So, like, say, right now you're working on a project on how to pilot a new program. You can create a team site called Piloting a New um, Sushi Program. And when you when you have that team side, you can add everybody that's part of your team. So if you've got deans, you've got the academic office, you've got maybe registrar, you want to put them all in that one site, and you share documents in that central place. So I may have something that I'm working on, I can dump it onto the team site, and Trisha may have something because she's part of the team, put it onto the team site, and everybody can see those documents and share those different things as you go along. And um, and it's just a central place. It's almost like having a work group without physically being there. And it's a great collaboration tool if you can use the team site. Okay, I see we have some raised hands. Do we have any questions in the question and answer, Ken? That... Uh, oh, yes. uh, go ahead. Yes. Um, Ashuma asks, uh, how do I print? stuff on her, uh, from her shared drive on her local printer at home? I think while you're connected via VPN to the shared drive, you should just be able to print it as normal, don't you think, Ken? Uh, yes, and I actually did a test right now. I'm, I'm actually connected to VDI, and VDI has a pass to my local printer. So, uh, so if you connect to your office desktop through a VDI session, you should have your local printer available to you as an option. Yeah, and we can walk you through that. I noticed Jen Oakley has a question about how can you post your photo instead of appearing yeah. live on WebEx. Um, what you want to do is log into hudsonccc.webex.com. Here, I'll type it. Um, HudsonCCC.WebEx.com, and you log in out there, and when you're out there, you can set up your profile. I don't know if there's a, a, a like a shorter way to do that. Is there, Ken, you know? I'm sorry? Do you know if there's another way of doing that besides logging in via a browser to set up your profile? Um, unfortunately, I don't. Okay. If we figure out another way, we'll let you all know. <laughs> but I think that's okay. the best way of doing it. Okay. Um, Ashuma wants to wants to be unmuted so she can ask a question. Okay. That is all we have to do is figure out how to do it. Okay. I found it before. Wow, I don't, hold on, I unmuted all instead of whatever. Let me see, somebody here. Um, in the meantime, uh, Lisa um, Bogart said that everyone who works at 
uh, Hudson is eligible to obtain a Journal Square Public Library. Um, she says you can obtain a virtual library card now. They have uh, two wonderful free streaming services, Canopy and Hoopla, and along with audiobooks and ebooks. And she said, and most importantly, it's completely free. Awesome. Okay, Anshuma, you want to try talking? I think I allowed you to talk. Yeah. All right. All right, Anshuma. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you for unmuting. Actually, I'm facing a lot of issues with the printing stuff. And I really wanted to get this resolved. And I found it a good platform to talk about. It. Because I often have to, previously, I'm not sure, like when we started working virtually, I was able to copy contracts like this, copy control C and paste it on my local, and I just print them. But now I'm not able to do that. And at times I have a lot of contracts, a lot of things to get printed. So that really makes it difficult. Like when I cannot copy paste, then I have to either attach them somewhere or drop them in some drive and then copy it. So I'm not sure how I can do that. Um, you should be able to do that. Um, I think what we want to do is walk you through um, connecting via connecting via VDI instead of however you're doing it right now because I know that works and I'm, that's the way I'm doing it. Like Ken said, it, I'm copy pasting. With, with regularity to the point where I can't, sometimes I get confused on which desktop I'm working on. <laughs> so um, you should be able to do that. Um, Ken, do you have any other thoughts on that one? Ken, you're muted. Say the VPN connection? Because I know that the VDI VDI does pass through local printer. Okay. So, and Shuma, we'll, we'll reach out to you about that, okay? Thank you. Thanks a lot, Trisha. No problem. So we have a couple of people asking, um, how can they get more information on the virtual library card to the Journal Square um, library, and also is it free? And um, Lisa did say it, it is free, and if you want, you can go to the Journal Square Public Library. It's jclibrary.org, and on there you'll see the um, link that says library card and it says virtual library card. So if you wanted to navigate yourself that way. Okay, any other, I noticed we're a little bit over our time, so do we have any other questions that we have not answered yet? Um, we have another question in the Q&A. It says, how can we remotely listen to our office phone messages? There are some instructions that I follow and can't access remotely to my office phone. I put a work order and someone tried to help. Um, she just, yeah, she's just asking how can she listen to her office messages from her phone and the instructions, I guess, um, she followed did not work for her. Okay, I do not know the answer to this off the top of my head. I know that you can do it, but I don't know what the steps are. Ken, do you happen to know what the steps are? Uh, unfortunately not. I don't know what the dial-in number is or the, or the passcode. Um, yeah. I think we should defer that to Hardik uh, when he returns and we can have him reach out. So she has some instructions. So I think um, it's probably a matter of just someone reaching out to her and going over those instructions.
I don't see anything else in the Q&A and the chat. Anybody else? We'll give you a couple of minutes if you have any other questions that you want to type in chat or raise your hand. I see a couple of raised hands. I'm not sure. Maybe. Ken, do you want to unmute our hand, people with raised hands? Uh, it doesn't appear that they're muted right now. But anyway, there is a question from Kate Vargo, what the difference is between VPN and, and remote.acc.edu. Okay, so um, function, functionally, they're very similar. Um, v, VPN stands for virtual private networking. Uh, that, that requires a client piece of client software that be installed on your computer. Um, and what that client does, essentially it connects your home computer through the college to the college network, your home computer becomes a part of the college network. Um, what remote ACCC.edu is? That's VDI. VDI stands for Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. What that does, it'll it connects you to the college's network like VPN, but in addition, it gives you a generic desktop to use instead of connecting to your own computer. Now, that's not to say that if you're using VDI, you cannot connect to your office computer, you can. That's just an alternate way of doing it. But you do not need VPN access for VDI. Um, everybody, everyone on, on, on campus has access to VDI. Whereas VPN, you require a license for. Uh, I hope that answers your question, uh, Kate. Uh, if you have any further questions, you can reach me directly. I also right, any other sorry. I'm sorry, Trisha. I dropped in the chat the link to the Journal Square free virtual library card application. And it just it looks pretty simplistic. So if anybody wants to grab that from the chat. Anyone else have questions? So Kate um, asked if all employees get VPN or if that's not necessary. Uh, it's not necessary for all employees to have VPN. Uh, all employees do have VDI, so if they need to access their computer, they can do it that way. If you need VPN, um, it's a matter. It's just a matter of sending an um, email to the help desk to ask to be set up. And what we will we will request that your supervisor approve it, and then um, we'll set that up for you. But basically, you need VPN to access colleague business objects and shared drives. That, primarily the, the things that you need. Um, Trisha, um, Anna asked a question, what are the main differences or advantages in WebEx event versus a WebEx meeting? WebEx events is mostly for when you might have a large number of attendees like I don't really recommend meetings for more than like 30, 35 people. Like it just gets very unwieldy. You have like millions of floating heads there and, and muting, unmuting is a little bit difficult. Um, WebEx events adds the Q&A as part of the built-in functionality. Um, panelists. For panelists, it work, their functionality is like a regular meeting. And then attendees, like right now we have everybody unmuted, I believe. So everyone can talk like normal, uh, but you don't have to worry about people inadvertently or on purpose sharing content when you're, you're trying to give a pre presentation or a panel discussion. Um, so um, a lot of it has to do with size. 
you know, if you're 20 people or less, I would never do a WebEx event um, just because it's not necessary. Does that make sense? Okay. I don't see anything else in the chat. And um, just a correction, um, Lisa said it's the Jersey Public Library. I think I said Journal Square and talked about it. But it's the Jersey City. The link that I sent is for the Jersey City Public Library virtual library card. Yeah, I see Lisa has a question about she's having a software conflict between WebEx and Zoom and video conferencing feature in Slack. Um, I have Zoom, WebEx, and Slack in installed on, I think, every computer I have access to, and I haven't run into this issue, so I would say definitely open a ticket and we'll try to work through it with you. There should be no reason why you shouldn't be able to do Google Meet, WebEx, Zoom, Slack. I mean, having them all open at the same time might cause issues with uh, Re system resources on your computer. Like I find that my laptop computer here at home, I, I have to, right now, the only thing I have running on this laptop is my VDI session to the office and WebEx, that's it. I've closed out everything else. And that's just because the, the laptop can't handle all of them at the same time. Um, so sometimes it's a resources thing, but but you should be able to have all installed and use all three at the same not obviously not simultaneously. I don't know how that will work, but but you should be able to use all three alternately. Any other questions? All right, thank you everyone. Yep. We'll have a recording available for anybody that wasn't able to attend in person. And I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful Mother's Day. Yep. Mother's Day to all the mothers. Thank you. Bye -bye.